Imagine you're hanging out with a friend and they say with a sly grin, everything I say from here on out is a lie. Intrigued, you raise an eyebrow, but then it hits you. Wait a minute, did they just lie about lying? Is anything they say true anymore? This, my friends, is the essence of the liar paradox. It plays on self-referential statements, where the statement itself talks about its own truth value. Here's the classic example. This statement is false. Simple, right? But hold on. If the statement is true, then it's claiming its own falsity, which makes it a lie. But if it's a lie, then the entire statement, including the claim of being false, can't be true. It's like an endless loop, a switch that keeps flipping back and forth between true and false without ever settling. Think of it like this. Imagine a magic coin. You flip it, but instead of landing on heads or tails, it somehow gets stuck spinning in midair. That's the frustration of the liar paradox. It challenges the very foundation of our understanding of truth and falsehood. Here's where things get even wilder. Philosophers have been wrestling with this paradox for ages and there's no single, universally accepted solution. Some argue that the statement itself becomes meaningless because it creates a logical contradiction. Others suggest there might be more truth values than just true and false. Perhaps there's a category for undetermined or paradoxical. The truth is, the paradox exposes the limitations of language. When statements start talking about themselves, things can get messy. It forces us to confront the idea that maybe truth isn't always black and white. Maybe there are shades of gray. The liar paradox isn't just a philosophical head scratcher. It has implications for computer science, mathematics, and even everyday life. It reminds us to be critical thinkers, to question what we hear and see, and to be aware of the power and limitations of language. So, the next time someone tells you a whopper, remember the liar paradox. Maybe it's not just a lie, Maybe it's a gateway to a whole new way of thinking about truth itself. Who knows? Maybe the real lie is that truth is always simple. Surprise paradox. Have you ever gotten that feeling where you know something bad is coming, but you have no clue when? Imagine this. You get a text from your boss saying a big project review is happening this week, but they won't tell you the exact day. All week you're on edge, right? That's kind of like the surprise paradox. Surprise, but not really. The surprise paradox is a mind bender that messes with the idea of being surprised. Here's the story. A poor guy is sentenced to hang, but with a twist, the execution will be someday that week, but it's a surprise. The catch? They tell him it can only happen Monday to Friday. The man starts thinking. If they hang me Monday, surprise. Then he thinks, well, same for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This is where it gets weird. He reasons that because he knows it's happening during the week, he'll be surprised no matter the day. But how can you be surprised by something you kind of expect? Mind blown? Here's the twist. There are a few ways to untangle this paradox. One idea is that the surprise comes from not knowing the exact time. Imagine you wake up every morning that week dreading the knock on the door. In that case, the knock itself might still surprise you, even though you know it's coming eventually. Another way to think about it is like this. Maybe the surprise isn't about the fact he's getting hanged, but rather the specific day. It's like that project review. You know it's coming, but that specific day still throws you for a loop. The point is, the surprise paradox shows how tricky our brains can be when it comes to information and expectations. It makes you wonder, can we ever be truly surprised by something we kind of see coming? That's the surprise paradox for you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would you be surprised in this situation or would you just be constantly on edge? Xeno Paradox. Imagine you're chilling on the couch, about to grab some popcorn, but it's all the way across the room. A philosopher named Zeno, like 2,500 years ago, would be like, hold up, can you even get there? Zeno wasn't trying to be annoying. He was messing with our brains with paradoxes about motion and infinity. Here's the gist. The slow and steady tortoise wins the race, almost. Imagine a race between you, super speedy, and a slow poke tortoise. Zeno says you'll never catch up because first you gotta reach the halfway point. 
but before that, you got to get halfway to the halfway point and then halfway to that point again. Seems like an infinite to-do list, right? Well, in reality, you'd obviously zoom past the tortoise. Zeno's trick is making a never-ending list of distances to cover, but math, specifically calculus, lets us see that you can cover those distances in a normal amount of time. Is a moving arrow actually moving? Zeno throws another curveball. Imagine an arrow flying through the air. At any single moment, is it moving or not? It can't be moving because it's got to be in one exact spot, right? But it also can't be completely still because, well, it's flying. Zeno trips us up by focusing on a single instant, but movement is about change over time. The arrow is definitely moving, just like how a video is made up of many still images, but appears to move. The big takeaway, don't get Zenoed. These paradoxes might seem crazy, but they're not meant to disprove motion. They challenge us to think carefully about how we define things and how we use infinity. They're like brain teasers that help develop math and our understanding of the universe. So next time you reach for that popcorn, remember Zeno and appreciate that you can actually get there without an infinite to-do list. Bootstrap paradox. Imagine you find a winning lottery ticket on the street. Lucky you. But here's the crazy part. The ticket has the next week's winning numbers. So you use those numbers to win the lottery. Now, where did that winning ticket come from? It came from you in the future. That's the bootstrap paradox in a nutshell. Something travels back in time, influences the past, and then ends up being created by that very past it influenced. Kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, but way more confusing. Here's another example. Let's say you're a huge fan of a musician. You travel back in time and give them a notebook filled with their greatest hits, songs they haven't even written yet. Inspired by the notebook, they write those songs, which you then travel back in time with. Wait, hold on a sec. See how it loops back on itself? The bootstrap paradox messes with our idea of cause and effect. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, in this case, it's both. There's no scientific answer yet, because you know time travel isn't a thing yet. But it's a fun thought experiment. Does the object become self-created? Is the future predetermined? These are the questions that keep our brains in a twist. So next time you find a mysterious note or a strangely familiar object, remember the bootstrap paradox. Maybe it's not just a coincidence, it's a message from your future self. Grandfather paradox, imagine you invent a time machine, super cool, right? And zip back to say, the 1980s. Unfortunately, you trip over your awesome time boots and accidentally knock over a bowling pin. Right when your young grandpa is about to meet your grandma, disaster. Now here's the twisty part. Since your grandparents never meet, your parents never exist. And that means you never exist either. Whoa, but wait, if you don't exist, then who went back in time and messed things up in the first place? Mind blown. This paradox is basically a giant what-if scenario that shows how messing with the past can create a confusing loop. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure story gone wrong. Here's the thing. Scientists aren't sure if time travel is even possible. But this paradox is a fun thought experiment that makes us think about time, free will, and the butterfly effect, that tiny changes can have big consequences. Think of it like stepping on a butterfly in the past. Maybe it just means a slightly different flower blooms. But hey, maybe it also changes the weather pattern for the whole year. The grandfather paradox is a reminder that messing with the past could be a recipe for disaster. It's best to leave history lessons to the history books, at least until we figure out the whole time travel thing, unless of course you fancy accidentally erasing yourself from existence.